and upon Jacob the son, and even upon Esau, because there's a long time battle between them. And you are going to find, even after Esau died, after Jacob died, the enmity between Israel and Edom. Israel coming from Jacob, Edom coming from Esau. That enmity continued. Many were defiled and destroyed because of the situation between Jacob and Esau. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband man waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and has long patience for it, until he receive the early and the latter rain. Be ye also patient. Running and running, be in a hurry. I want it now. I want it. I must get it now. This is my right. If it passes now, when you will come back again, be ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord. Draw his knife. The Lord is telling us we need patience to be able to perfect the fruit of righteousness in our lives. We're looking at Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, we're reading from verse 15. How do you check up your life? Looks like everything has now become, you know, hurried up. I want it now. I must get it now. My flesh is saying, have it now. My mind is saying, have it now. My neighbors are saying, have it now. My mother is saying, have it now. Daddy is saying, have it now. Fellow friend, friends and workers, fellow workers, believers are saying, have it now. Impatience. Looks like people are passing impatience to their children. Friends are passing impatience to their friends. And even leaders sometimes are passing impatience to the members of the church. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Finishing time. Impatience. And the Lord is saying that impatience can bring tragedy into our lives. Preventable tragedy prevent it avoid it Luke chapter 8 verse 15 Luke chapter 8 verse 15 but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word keep it and bring forth fruit with patience bringing forth fruit with patience number one preventing the tragedy of impatience number two prevailing over the transgression of indifference this is another thing that brings tragedy in people's lives preventable tragedies something that could easily be avoided prevented they do not prevent it because of indifference well, that means I don't care. They're carefree. I'm not concerned. If it comes, okay. If it doesn't come, all right. If I'm allowed, okay. If I'm not allowed, okay. If I have it, all right. If I don't have it, all right. Indifference that they do not care. And the Lord is saying that is going to bring a tragedy we could have prevented. Exodus chapter 9. In Exodus chapter 9, I'm reading from verse reading from verse 18. Exodus chapter 9, verse 18. Behold, tomorrow about this time, I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as has not been in Egypt since the foundations thereof even until now send therefore now and gather thy cattle and all that thou hast in the field for upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field and shall not be brought home the hail shall come down upon them and they shall what die they were warned hail judgment of hell coming he that feared the lord the word of the lord among the servants of pharaoh made his servants and his cattle to flee into the houses 
and he that regarded not the word of the Lord let his servants and his cattle in the field. Those who did not care. What do I care about, about hell coming? About judgment coming? They didn't care. Verse 22. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thy hand toward heaven, that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt, upon man, upon beast, and upon the herb, upon herb of the field, throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and the fire ran along upon the ground, and the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail. And then it says, Very grievous, such as there was not, there was none like it in all the land of Egypt, since it became a nation. And the hail smote throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and Beast, and the hills mulch every herb of the field and break every tree of the field. There were careless, carefree men that remained in the field. They didn't care, they didn't worry. Judgment was coming, hail will be coming. Who cares? They said. And because of that, they died unnecessarily and went to hell prematurely. In Proverbs chapter 1. A transgression of indifference. Indifference is sin. It's a transgression. And it brings calamity that is preventable. Brings judgment that is preventable. And brings tragedy you could have avoided. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24. Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel, and would, no, and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. These are indifferent people. God wants them. They don't care. God speaks. They don't care. They don't bother. And he says, because of that indifference, because I stretch out my hand, and you refuse, because I warn you, and you refuse. I'm going to laugh when your calamity comes. Verse 27, when your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me, for that they hated knowledge, and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way, and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. It's telling us there that we need to care when God says that this is what you do. We do it very quickly and we do it exactly as He wants it done. We're looking at Malachi chapter 2. Malachi chapter 2, the transgression of indifference. And the Lord is saying that indifference will cost us a great deal in our lives, will bring tragedy, destruction judgment punishment we could have avoided malachi chapter 2 verse 2 malachi chapter 2 verse 2 if he will not hear if he will not lay to heart if you'll say i don't care i'm not worried i'm not concerned what are you thinking about what are you thinking that's so serious a matter I don't think like that. I mean, different. I just want whatever will happen to happen. The Lord is saying, if you will not hear the word of the Lord, the word of wisdom, and the word of warning, and the word that shows the way of the Lord, how to live, what to do, 
are to return unto the Lord. If ye will not hear, and then it says, if ye will not take it to heart, lay it to heart, you will just say, I just want to free my mind from that. I don't want to be thinking about, you know, repent, turn to the Lord, be righteous, come to the Lord, make right your way, obey the Lord. I just want to, I want to be free. I just want to remove everything away from my heart. I'm not, I'm not storing that thing in my mind. Being indifferent as to what the Lord requires for salvation. As to what the Lord requires for getting to heaven and having relationship and fellowship with Him. It says, if you're not late to her to give glory unto me, unto my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will even send the curse upon you. It's a preventable curse, a preventable calamity that shouldn't have been. But he said, if you will not lay to her, that's what I'm going to do. I will curse your blessings. Then he said, yea, I have cursed them already because you do not lay it to heart. It's a transgression of indifference that the Lord is saying that should not be. And then we're looking at Judges chapter 5. Judges chapter 5. In Judges chapter 5, we're looking at verse 23. What the Lord expects of his own people lay it to heart. Think about it. Get involved. Arise and do something. And do what the Lord requires. Don't be indifferent. We're looking at Judges chapter 5, verse 23. It says, Curse ye mirrors. Says, says the angel of the Lord, cause he bitterly the inhabitants thereof. Why? What evil have they committed? Adultery, fornication, immorality, stealing, sacred, sacred ledge. What is it they have done? Because they came not to the help of the Lord. To the help of the Lord against the mighty. It says just because they were carefree, careless, non-challenged, not caring, not bothered, not concerned. And because they came not to the help of the Lord, and they said, well, that's all right, Gideon is there, Gideon is doing it. And he said, they are there, Deborah is doing it. And they said, Barak is there, and all those people are there. What do I need to worry? The 300 people following after Gideon, they are all there. And those apostles are there, those disciples are there. All the soul winners are there. What have I got to do? I'm all right. Since everybody is there already, what can I add to what they're doing? That indifference brings calamity and brings tragedy. I pray God will save us from all that tragedy in Jesus' name. I was waiting for your amen there. I just want to, you to keep awake. You know, sometimes like this, when I open Old Testament, New Testament, the prophets and the kings and gospels and acts and Romans, revelation everywhere, then you say, okay, go on, pastor, and let me sleep. When you're ready to pray, call me, I'll join you. Everybody wake up. See, we're waking up. Thank God you're waking up. You're not indifferent in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 14. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, The saints says the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou art cold or hot. Indifferent, neither cold nor hot. Indifferent, neither up nor down indifferent neither for or against indifferent neither far bench nor just not doing anything or just like that neither cold nor hot it says so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot i will spill thee out of my mouth where do you stand on which side are you? All these that we're talking about, the salvation of sinners and the evangelization of our community. Where do you stand? I stand nowhere. It's all right. Let them go and do it. 
I'm not opposed to it. Only I, I, I just, I, I don't know why. I just don't have any interest to do anything different. I just want to be at peace and at ease. I just want to live my life a quiet life. Get something done. No, it's too late for me now. I don't know the way my heart is. It's like I'm not interested in anything anymore. And the Lord is saying, because you are neither cold nor hot, I will spill thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich. What else am I looking for? I'm increased with goods. What else am I searching for? And I have need of nothing. What do I need again? I've done enough. I've got enough. I possess enough. Because of that, you are indifferent to the call of the Lord. And then it says, And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. The people that are indifferent, they are naked spiritually. And because they said, okay, it's not my concern. I'm not asking for anything. I'm all right the way I am. I don't have to do anything anymore. That coldness, that lukewarmness, it says that makes you naked. And then it says, anoint thine eyes with eyes serve, that thou may see. As many as I love, I rebuke. As many as I, what? I hate. Tell me out loud. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasing the zealous therefore and do what? And repent. Don't be indifferent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. The Lord wants us to, to be active. To get up and get something done and not to be indifferent prevailing over the transgression of indifference point number three now we need to deal with the tongue of iniquity the tongue of iniquity isn't that the tongue that brought tragedy preventable tragedy upon many many people we're looking at james chapter three preventable tragedy the tragedy of an untamed tongue uncontrolled tongue unguarded tongue unguided tongue james chapter 3 verse 6 and the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity so is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the curse of nature and it is set on the fire of hell. How many people claim to be saved and their tongues bring them to the tragedy of hellfire? How many people claim to be trusted, trustworthy members of the church? And their tongues get them into destruction, devastation. The tongue is a world of iniquity. Brings destruction upon people. We're looking at 2 Kings chapter 7. 2 Kings chapter 7. Reading from verse 1. Then Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. That shall silence everybody. But of somebody there whose tongue will not be at rest. When you hear, hear the word of the Lord. That should make everybody pay attention and not think about your own thoughts, your own feeling, your own imagination, your own mind. Hear the word of the Lord. That says the Lord tomorrow about this time. Shall a measure of flour of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria? Then a lord on whose hand the king lived 
answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would open the windows of heaven, my this sin be? You don't have to say that. If you didn't believe, you could have kept quiet. Look at, let, just, look at, just say to yourself, let's wait and see. Look at what the prophet is saying. And look at what the prophet is declaring in his prophecy, prediction. By this time tomorrow, the famine will come to an end. Everything will change. And God will bring plenty and prosperity for his people once again. And then he said, even if the Lord will open the windows of heaven, how can that be? You shouldn't have said that. The tongue of iniquity, iniquity in their tongue, sin in their tongue, unbelief in their tongue. And when it comes like that, when you speak it out like that, you make other people to be unbelieving. He was a Lord on whom the king was leaning. And when a person like that says anything doubtful, anything unbelieving, anything derogatory to the word of God, other people too will be unbelieving. And then the man of God said, And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. Let's look at verse 16. In verse 16, and the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. And the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned to have the charge of the gate. And the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died as the man of God had said, who spake when the king came down to him. See the tragedy that came on him because of his tongue. That shouldn't have happened. Why would you allow such things to happen in your life? We're looking at Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14, preventable tragedy. It's good to be quiet, good to be silent. Even when you don't understand what's going on, why this, why that, why are you not quiet? Why don't you, don't you just keep quiet and say, let's see what will happen. If it concerns you, you go to the Lord in prayer. You repent, turn to the Lord. And after that repentance, after you've done the will of God, you remain patient. Other than spoiling everything, spoiling your case, spoiling your life with the utterances of your tongue. We're looking at Numbers chapter 14, verse 28. 14, verse 28. Here the Lord is telling us about those ten spies that went to the land and they came back. And then also, these uh, children of Israel that murmured, that cried, that felt, Why has God brought uh, us out of the land of Egypt to die in this wilderness? See what happened. Verse 28, Numbers 14, Say unto them, As truly as I live, says the Lord, As ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do unto you. Your carcasses shall fall. In this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you according to your whole number from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me, doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. But your little ones, which ye said, shall be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye 